we can use our graphing calculator to graph a system of equations and find the intersection point for us. Now you'll see here that I have three equations entered into our y equals screen. We have half x plus two, we have negative x plus five, and we have negative seven x minus three. We are only going to, graph, going to graph two of these at a time. You'll notice that next to the third equation, the equal sign is not highlighted. We can arrow down and hover over the equal sign and press enter on top of that equal sign. That will enable and disable the equation as needed. So right now, when I press graph, I'm only going to, gra going to graph these, two these top two equations. So press graph, and there's my top two equations. I can press trace and arrow over the first equation, y1, and I can press the up arrow and go over the second equation, y2. Obviously, I am interested in that intersection point right there. Based on the fact that it's very close to 2, 3, it's a pretty reasonable guess that that's where the intersection point is going to be. However, we do want the calculator to find it for us exactly. So we press second, trace, and open up the calc menu, or the calculate menu, and we arrow down to number five, which is intersect, and we press enter. The calculator asks us to choose the first curve that we're going to look at, so that's gonna be Y1. It asks us to choose the second curve, and you'll notice that it's switched over to Y2, so we press enter. And then the calculator wants us to guess where the intersection point is. This guess matters more when there's multiple intersection points, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But for right now, that guess can be anywhere, and it's going to find our needed intersection point. So we can just press enter, and our intersection is at the point two, three. That is not an inherently challenging example. That is an example that we could do by hand and probably get the answer fairly accurately. The reason that the calculator is such a valuable tool is that it'll find those intersection points for us in those situations where it's not so easy to find the point exactly. So for that demonstration, I'm gonna turn off the first equation by arrowing over to the equal sign and pressing enter. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna turn on the third one. And now I wanna graph the red and the black, negative x plus five and negative seven x minus three. Here we can see we have an intersection point between those two lines with the negative slopes. I can arrow over close to that intersection point and that one's a little bit tougher to find. It looks like it's around negative 1.2, negative 1.3. While we could use some algebraic technique in order to find the intersection point, the truth is, is that the calculator can do it for us here. So we go back into the calculate menu, we arrow down to number five to the intersect, we press enter, we choose the first curve, we choose the second curve, and we make a guess, and there's our intersection point. Now, those of you more fluent with fractions will recognize this as negative four over three, and recognize this as six and one third, or 19 over three, and that's where our algebraic solution would be. But because the calculator is going to round and use approximation techniques to find that point, it gives us the decimal expansion with the repeated decimal, and that's okay. So we understand that there's certain limitations to the calculator, and when you get one of the long repeating decimals, or when you get a decimal that looks like a random smattering of digits, it's likely that you're going to round anyway, round to the nearest hundredth, round to the nearest tenth, and you are just looking for that approximate solution. The reason that you have to choose the first curve or the second curve is because you are actually able to graph all three of them at once and look for any of the intersection points that you're interested in. So I'm going to go back into the calc menu, and this is more just for your interest. This has less to do with systems of equations and more to do with the calculator. But you can go into the intersect and say I want my first curve to be y1, but I don't want my second curve to be y2. I can arrow up and switch it to y3, and now I want to look at the intersection between the blue and the black, and they find that intersection point for us at negative two-thirds and one and two-thirds. So if you do end up having multiple equations inside of the same system, you can look for intersections between individual lines, but you're not, you're, it's very rare that you're going to see probably um, uh, this, all three of the lines intersecting at the same point. So let's look at what this, let's use this on a nonlinear system. So a nonlinear system is a system that consists of 
one or more equations that are not linear. The most basic one that we could graph is simply just x squared. We'll look at the base parabola and we'll compare that to a horizontal line. And again, this is just for the sake of demonstration. This is called a nonlinear system. Yeah, there's a line in it, but the parabola certainly is not a line. And there's our parabola and our horizontal line. And if we look for the intersection point, just like we had previously, and we choose option number five, again, the parabola will be my first curve and the line will be my second curve. But now the guess matters because if I put the guess near the intersection point that's on the left, I get that solution. But if I do it again, and this time move over to the other point, and make my choices over here, I get the other intersection point. And that works most of the time. The, the background approximation technique that the calculator uses for finding the intersection point will occasionally fail and will send you back to the other one. But if you, if you mess around with the guess a little bit, usually you can get it uh, pretty close in terms of it finding that intersection point. But sometimes if you do put it over here, it might try to go back and find the one on the, that's on the left. That's okay. You just try it again with a different set, a different guess, and then you could eventually find that intersection point. But depending on the nature of the system, we saw the linear system with its one intersection point. We see a nonlinear system here with two intersection points, and you're looking for those solutions. The calculator can be a tremendous resource in that regard because it does allow you to find those points that wouldn't be easy for us to draw.